Here is a shot of my air compressor for my spray gun. I sped this part of the video up because I'm spraying the final coat of red on top of red and you can't see a lot of what was going on anyway. I thought I would go out on a limb and try this water-based acrylic paint and it turns out that I'm not so crazy after all because water-based acrylic is quite an acceptable guitar paint after all. I bought this paint in an 800ml bottle from a stationery warehouse for $2 and thinned it out with water to run it through my spray gun. It turned out quite good. I was trying to layer the coats thick enough to cover the center line on the body that you can see on the front and back. I should have used some grain filler or something like that to fill it in, but I had assumed that three layers of primer would have covered it over. There might have been some shrinkage or swelling to make it appear so defined, because I had primed with three coats and it still showed through. Considering this is cheap construction wood from a hardware store, there was bound to be some swelling or shrinkage at some point. These are the first layers of polyurethane. In this light, it looks like I didn't have the fan set wide enough, or I was not passing the lines close enough, but I think the light is messing with the way that it looks. Regardless of how this pass turned out, throughout the session I would keep adjusting the gun until I was shooting the way that I wanted it. I also made further passes closer together with much more overlap. So I've learnt a lot since this session, I have now devised a spray routine to ensure I do not get runs in the poly or paint. Up until this point I tried choking the material flow and just keep layering until it looked like it was about to run. Wait for 30 to 60 minutes and then go again. Layering until it looked covered well enough. I now set the gun to allow a generous amount of paint or clear through in one pass but only spray two coats and then wait for 15 minutes for it to dry off a bit. This is the best method I have devised to not lay too much too quickly and patience between the layers pays off rather well. 
This might be a little too overcautious, but I have avoided runs ever since, except for when the gun is not set up properly, and full flow can cause runs if the pass is not quick enough. By now you will see that I was clear coating both guitars at once. At this point, the more brown looking guitar is the Maiden Flamingo Tribute, and this red body was just the second priority. I was considering for a long time to finish the body, but not assemble it to a working guitar, because all the hardware would move across to the main build. Because it was so good looking, and it would only take a neck and some spare pickups, I continued to complete the setup and make it playable. It currently has a terrible setup and really cheap secondhand squire parts, however it plays okay and looks amazing. The routine here is to spray the front, then the sides, and then the back. Twice in one session, and then waiting 15 minutes before the next two layers. In preparation for this spray job, I made a double-headed stand attachment I added to a speaker stand. This works really well for these flamingo bodies, but a strat with two horns is more challenging because it's hard to get right into the horns. Because of the missing second horn on this guitar, it is easy to pass the gun by that end. You can just wave the gun past it like floating down steps, whereas on a strat, you have to twist and turn to get the paint on the inside of the horns.
On the back there, you can see where I had a bit of an issue with the paint. There has been a bit of a run that I had to deal with and was not able to hide it with wet sanding. I didn't put too much more effort into fixing things like that on this body being the practice run. Here I go with the cross hatching, changing the fan to the horizontal plane and spraying across instead of along the body. In the past I have been caught leaving the fan in the other direction, so instead of spreading out the material, it groups it up in one line. Since I made this mistake with the main Flamingo build, I am always double checking the fan orientation if I have been changing it so I don't spray in the wrong direction again. I now have a heavy duty airline and have also added an oil trap. The oil trap also prevents the moisture in the line escaping through the gun and landing with the clear or paint on the body.
I noticed that after leaving this guitar on a couch at my parents' house for about six months, there was a tiny bit of a pattern indented in the clear coat on the back. I will now have to wet sand and buff it again to fix that. Also, in the area where I sunk screws into the body, after eight months I can now see some of the wood filler shape showing through the paint. If anything, I think the wood filler should have been left to have set for at least a week before sanding back, as it seems to have either shrunk or expanded and can be seen under the surface. Again, this was the practice run, so it is what it is. There was no need to insert screws into the body of the main build. It's these little things that you learn along the way on a practice run that arm you with the wisdom to avoid doing certain things on future projects or handle situations differently. This is how the final build turned out. It's the body that ended up with the fender neck, the good set of pickups and the wiring harness. I made an alternate pick guard out of wood for that one. The bodies are almost identical.
Here you can see the orange peel effect that is normal for a sprayed guitar. This was the last coat that I needed to do for this project. In the next part you will see the buffing process that I apply to all my projects.